Hello and welcome to today's practice. Today's practice is in honor of the concept known as a parigraha or non-possessiveness. Other ways that a parigraha is defined include words such as non-attachment, non-clinging, non-grasping. So in essence, the concept really is about being able to identify when it's time to let something go or when it's time to release something. And then also being able to have the set of skills that are necessary to actually release whatever it is that you need to let go. So some examples might include um, energy that um, feels somewhat stuck and that might manifest as a persistent emotion, such as anger or grief, jealousy. Another example might be a cyclical thought pattern that you find is not helping you or that is actually causing you some internal suffering. This might also look like releasing or letting go of certain rules or jobs or even relationships. So a parigraha really invites us to connect to the flow of energy taking in and also releasing when it's appropriate to do so. So we are going to begin today's practice reclined on the spine. So really you can just set everything off to the side so that it isn't in your way. And then you're gonna come down to your spine. And upon first arriving, you might do a little bit of moving. So we're going to take Shavasana as our first pose. So just to help release tension from the back, you might take a few windshield wipers or knees to chest or full body stretch. And once you feel ready, we're going to extend the legs out long on the mat. Now, if you find this doesn't work well for your spine, please feel free to either slide a bolster, a rolled blanket beneath your knees, or even just keep the knees bent feet flat. So you want to let the weight of your heels drop down and allow the toes to fall open so that you're releasing and letting go of the weight of your legs. We're going to take the arms down by the legs and if possible, just turn the palms to face up to the sky. Allow your eyes to softly close. Begin by sensing into the physical body. And notice if you feel as though you're holding a lot of engagement or tension in your hands or your arms, the belly, face. Be conscious of any tension or holding in the physical body. And as you exhale, you can begin softening these areas of the body.
feeling yourself let go if there's a tendency to hold tension in the belly or around your shoulder blades, maybe in your throat. This sense of softening or release allows energy to move more freely. And begin to feel the freedom of this movement as the breath gracefully circulates through your body. We'll rest here for another one to two minutes. And begin to pay extra attention to the exhalation, which represents the ability to release. To let go. Take the last one or two cycles of breath here, emphasizing the exhalation. So see if you can breathe out for an extra, maybe one, two, three, or even four seconds. After this exhalation, we'll bend one knee at a time. We're going to come into knees to chest. So you're going to bend the knees, plant the feet initially, and then pick up the feet so that the thighs start to compress in toward the ribs. And you can wrap your hands around your shin bones and just a little rolling and rocking across your lower back. This pose is called Apanasana, and the energy of Apanavayu has to do with our ability to let go physically in terms of urination, menstruation, elimination, childbirth. And emotionally, it has to do with our ability to just feel really settled, grounded emotionally stable. Once you feel ready, you're going to plant the feet back down onto the mat. And you're just going to pick up the hips and slide the hips an inch or two over to the right, setting them back down. Let's go nice and wide with the arms. Go even wide with the feet and let the knees fall to the left. Windshield wiper twist. Now feel free, stay here or slide that right foot toward the left. Allow the knees to maybe stack right leg on top of left. It's going to be a little more challenge in the spine. Stay there or possibly even cross the right leg over the left. Be a little stronger in the spine and the stretch across the outer right hip. So please take the version that feels the best in your body. Left hand might come up to gently press into the right thigh. I'm going to take your breath in here through the nose. And as you exhale, we'll, we'll take a very soft, sighing exhalation through the mouth. As we hold in this twist, we'll take a few more cycles of breath that way. So these 
this type of breath is even often referred to as a letting go breath. So breathe in through the nose and then take a very soft, sighing exhale out through the mouth. Release your left hand if it's connected to your right thigh. If the right leg is crossed on top of the left, go ahead and uncross. And let's make our way back up to the center. Now, as you come to the center, you want to lift your hips through the center and then slide your hips an inch or two over to the left. Now, those same options are available to you. You can go wide with the feet, windshield wiper twists. If all the abdominal shapes stack the left knee on top of the right or eagle twist, left leg crosses over the right. The right hand might come to the left thigh, creating an anchoring effect. And then we'll take those letting go breaths on the second side. So take a breath in through the nose. And to exhale, soft sigh out through the mouth. Last one to two cycles of breath. The right hand is connected to the left thigh. Release the right arm. You might uncross the left leg. If you're in eagle twist, then we're going to bring the knees back to the center. Slide the pelvis also back to the center. Keep the heels approximately lined with the sitting bones are slightly wider, knees pointing up to the sky. We're gonna bring the arms down by the side waist. And then you're gonna keep the upper backs of the arms to the mat while you bend at the elbows, bringing the forearms perpendicular to the floor. It's gonna press firm into the backs of the upper arms and breathe in, lift the hips into bridge. So as you start these dynamic Bridge flows, you want to keep the head and neck stable so the chest will lift up toward the chin. Spread the fingers and activate the center of your palms. Exhale as you let your hips come back down and meet the mat. Inhale as you let your hips lift up. Bridge pose. And exhale, let the hips come back down. So we're Feeling the dynamic movement in and out of the pose. Inhale, lift the hip. Dynamic flow in and out represents the flow of energy drawing in and releasing outward. Exhale, lower the hips. Let's do one more in a dynamic flow. Breathe in, lift the hips. Exhale to release. Now on this next one, we're going to lift the hips and then hold for a few moments in the bridge. If for any reason it feels better on your body to continue moving out, then please do so. Otherwise, we tap into the feeling of stabilization in the feet, ankles, legs, spinal muscles, the sense of opening across the front of the body. A little bit of compression in the throat channel. Take a breath in. And then exhale, let the hips come back down to the mat. All right, we're gonna pick up the feet, hug the knees and thighs in toward the chest. We have a couple options. You can roll forward and back on your spine to transition to table, or you can roll to the right or to the left and come to table from there, just another time or two, you're rolling on your spine. 
Okay, and we're gonna come forward. We're gonna come to table. So recommend placing a blanket across the center of your yoga mat so that you can create a little support, some cushion for the knees. Everything else out to the side, blocks could go to the front short side. I'm gonna come to table. And as you arrive in the table, we're just gonna take a couple cat cow. So hands as wide or a little wider than the shoulders, breathe in, begin to release the belly button down to the mat. Lift up through the heart, open the throat. Exhale, press the hands and round the spine. As you breathe out, notice the gentle tone across the belly as you arc and round the back body. Inhale, release the belly. Lift the heart, lift the chin. Exhale, around the spine. Inhale, release the belly, lift the heart. And exhale to ground. Inhale, come in to neutral. Now we're gonna pick up that right knee and move the right foot off to the right, setting the right knee back down. Walk the right hand an inch forward and extend through the left knee so you come into knee down side plank. So you can stay right here. This is a great pose that creates stabilization through the right arm, through the shoulder, builds focus and concentration. You might also engage a little bit through the low belly to lift the left leg, maybe bring the left arm by the ear. So we'll do a few knee contractions here. So take your breath in here, and then as you exhale, curl the left knee and elbow in toward the center, and then take a breath in and re-extend back out. And then two more times, exhale, curl into the center, and inhale to reach out. One more time, exhale, curl the knee and the elbow in, and inhale to extend. You can take the left knee and begin to bend it. So you're reaching the left sole of the foot back behind you. You can stay right there. You can bring the left hand to the hip or maybe even the left hand to the front of the ankle. You can press the ankle into the hand just to create some opening across the front plane of the body. So just allow your body to find the version in each and every pose that works the best for you. So we're working to let go of any expectation for the body to move into any specific pose in today's practice. Take a breath in and extend out through the left leg and the arm. Exhale, bring the left hand and the knee back to the mat. Readjust that right knee. One cat cow here in the center. Breathe in, release the belly, lift the heart, lift the chin. Exhale, press the hands and round through the spine. Maybe even hold in that rounded spine just for one extra inhale and exhale. Inhale, come to neutral. Pick up the left knee, move the left foot off to the left as the left knee comes back down. Now that left hand might go forward an inch or two as you extend through your right knee. Extend your right arm maybe up to the sky. And you can hold for the entirety of the pose right here. You may be floating the right leg up, right arm might extend by the ear. Take a breath in and then as you exhale, curl the right knee and elbow maybe into center. And then inhale as you open the pose back out. Exhale as you curl the knee and the elbow into the center. And inhale as you extend. One last time. Exhale, curl in. And inhale to reach out. Hold here or bend the right knee. Start to move the right sole of the foot back. Right hand could stay at the right hip or come to the front of the right ankle. That gives you an anchor point for the right ankle to press into the right hand, opening across the front plane of the body. All right, breathe in, extend through the right arm and right knee once again. Exhale, come back to table. Right hand, right knee, come down, readjust that left knee. Breathe in, cow tilt in the pelvis and spine. 
Release the belly, lift through the heart, open through the throat, exhale, cat stretch, press the hands, round the spine, hold on to that cat stretch for another breath in and out. And then on the next inhalation, cow tilt again, release the belly, lift the heart, exhale, curl the toes under, lift the knees, coming into the first downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana, the downward facing dog. So you can take some time here, pedal through the knees, walk out through the feet. Okay, we're gonna pause in downward dog to let the weight shift into the left ball of the foot. Inhale, you're gonna take your right heel, sweep it up into downward facing dog, lift. Now as you exhale, curl your right knee into the chest, step the right foot forward by the right wrist, and then back left knee is gonna lower down to the mat. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Walk your hands up to your right side. You might stay here with the hands to the right thigh, scissoring the legs toward one another. So right heel and left knee almost feel like they're trying to draw toward one another. You could also take a twist by sliding the right hand to the hip and then begin to cross that left hand over the right thigh. So you begin to lean the torso forward, taking a twist. You could stay there or hook the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh, bringing the hands together in prayer. Feel free to stay right here, which is a stronger stretch for the left hip flexor and down through the left quadriceps. You can also curl the left toes under and maybe elevate the left knee coming into high lunge. You can look to the right side of the room or even rotate the head down so you're looking down toward your right big toe, which might help to stabilize balance if you feel a little bit wobbly. Good. Keep it. Drawing that right shoulder blade back as you spin your heart open toward the right. Breathe in. One more out breath here. Good. From low lunge or high lunge, let's come back to the center. Shoulders stack over the hips momentarily. And then exhale, frame the right foot. And step the right foot back. Come into downward dog. And then pedal out through the feet, the knees. Find stillness in your downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Then as you're exhaling, softly sigh the breath out. Take a letting go exhalation. Ground into the right ball of the foot. Inhale, send your left heel up into down dog split. Bending through the back of the left knee as you reach the heel high. Exhale, curl the left knee into the chest. Slightly step the left foot by the left wrist. Take the back right knee down. Walk the hands up. Come to Anjaneyasana, low lunge. The left heel and the right knee will slide toward one another. And you can always stay right here in the center. Or left hand to hip. Right hand begins to cross over, coming to the outside of the left thigh. Stay there. Hook the right elbow to the outer thigh, possibly bringing the hands together in prayer twist. This left shoulder blade is going to draw back. So you're going to open through the heart. You can stay here, curl your right toes under, maybe lift your right knee to release any attachment to any certain version of the pose and really truly just honoring where the body happens to be in this present moment. Turn the gaze to the left or look down at the left big toe. One last cycle of breath here. going to come back to the center, either in high lunge or low lunge. Come back around to the front, prayer hands at the heart, draw the tailbone down, and then exhale, frame your left foot, step your left foot back, come into downward dog. A little pedal out through your feet and your knees. Another letting go breath can be helpful here. Breathe in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Ground into the left ball of the foot. Inhale, right heel sweeps high, down dog split. 
Exhale, curl the right knee into the chest. Step the right foot by the right wrist. Virabhadrasana two. Now spin the left heel down, warrior two. Gonna circle that left arm around and up. You're gonna turn your chest to face the right long side of the mat. And so for a moment, you can take this back left arm and start to sweep it toward the left long side of the mat, forward toward the right hand. You're gonna bend that left elbow so you're pulling a bow. Draw the left elbow back, opening across the left chest. Left hand's now gonna come to the left thigh as you arc into reverse warrior. Keep the right knee reaching toward the front short side of the mat. Take a breath in. As you exhale, pass through warrior two. Frame your right foot. Bend your left heel, step back, down dog. From this downward facing dog, lift your heels high away from the floor. We're gonna roll the body forward out into plank. So curl your chin in as you're rolling the body forward. Plank with knees up or knees down. Exhale, bend the elbows and lower down to the chest and ribs. Inhale, curl the chest up into cobra. Draw the tailbone down, press the tops of the feet down. Exhale, downward facing dog. From downward dog, shift into the right ball of the foot. Inhale, left heel is going to lift nice and high. Down dog, split. Exhale, curl your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot by your wrist. Bend the right heel down for Fear of Adrasana to circle that right arm around. Turn your chest to face the right side of the mat. Now this back right arm is going to start to sweep toward that left arm. So it goes to the side of the room. Bring it forward. And then as the hands come toward one another, bend your right elbow. Pulling the bowstring. Open the right chest. Reverse way your right hand to right thigh. Arc the left arm by the left ear as your left knee reaches toward the front short side of the mat. Breathe in, and then as you exhale, pass through warrior two, frame your left foot, spin off your right heel, step back, down dog. Lift the heels high as you breathe in and roll your body forward out into plank with knees up or knees down. Exhale, begin to bend the elbows. If knees are up, move more toward the tips of the toes. Inhale, curl up into cobra. Open through the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's do that flow one more time on each side. Inhale, right heel lifts high, down dog split. Exhale, curl your right knee in. Step your right foot through. Spin your left heel down, warrior two. Circle the left arm around, rise up. Back left arm is going to sweep toward the front right arm and then start to bend the left elbow as you draw the left elbow back. On your next breath in, reverse warrior. Left hand down, right arm reaches. On your next exhalation, pass through warrior two. Frame your right foot, left heel lifts, right foot goes to down dog. Breathe in, lift the heels high, roll out into plank. Exhale, begin to bend the elbows or all the way or even hover. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Second side, right heel, right ball of the foot roots, left heel lifts. Exhale, curl the left knee in, step the left foot forward, then the right heel down. Inhale, warrior two. That right arm sweeps forward toward the left hand. The right elbow is going to bend and draw back. And then on the breath in, right hand lands on the thigh. Left arm sweeps by the left ear, reverse warrior. And on your next exhalation, pass through warrior two. Frame your left foot, bend your right heel. Step back, down dog. Lift your heels and inhale, roll forward out into plank. Knees up or knees down. Exhale, bend at the elbows, lower all the way or hover. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Taking a few cycles of breath here now or also feel free at any point to take the pose of the child, balasana.
right, take another cycle of breath here. All right, let's shift back with the toes just an inch or two. Lift the heels away from the floor. We're going to start to roll the hips out. Just going to come out into plank with knees up or knees down, knee down plank. Exhale, begin to bend the elbows. Going to lower down through the chest and ribs. We're going to keep the hands tucked underneath of the low chest for Shalabhasana, locust. You're going to draw your tailbone down and start to lift the chest and the legs away from the floor. I can stay right here with hands on the mat for some more support for the back. I can float the hands away from the floor an inch or two. You can draw those shoulder blades in toward one another. You could also send your hands down, maybe even interlocking the hands over the low back. Breathe in. And exhale, we'll go to crocodile shape. So you can stack your hands, bring your forehead to your stacked palms, and let the weight of your front body release and let go. So feel free to sway the hips a little bit from side to side. This pose invites us to release the weight of the body downward and to turn the senses inward, releasing excess stimulation. Turn to the breath. One more belly down back bend here, Danya Rasana. So take a second, re-slide those hands under the low chest. So we're going to keep the knees a little wide as we bend the knees and bring the inner edges of the feet together to touch. The feet fan out from there. We're going to start with a version of Danya Rasana. So you can draw the tailbone down. Start to lift the knees and thighs as well as the chest. Now you can stay right here in this version of bow. You might take your hands and reach them back as though they were attempting to reach the legs. You can stay there. You can actually separate your feet, maybe catch hold of hands to wrists, our hands to ankles rather, and then press the ankles into the hands to create the bow shape with the body. It's going to be a little rocking forward and back. On the belly as you breathe. Okay, take a breath in. As you exhale, returning once again to crocodile, stack your hands, release your feet, maybe a little bit of swing with your hips from side to side. I'm just taking a moment to feel into the energetics of this pose, which are about the sense of release the feeling of connection to the earth. Think of almost in this pose, just this sense of releasing what is no longer serving you and letting it go downward into the earth. All right, let's slide the hands underneath of the low chest, curl the toes under in preparation for knee down or um, knees lifted planks. You're gonna keep either the knees down or elevate the knees away from the floor. And as you breathe in, press up through plank or knee down plank, and then exhale back into downward dog. Taking the head below the heart allows us to reframe, to see things from a different perspective. So let's take another cycle of breath here. All right, let the weight shift into the left ball of the foot. Inhale, right heel reaches back up, down dog split. Exhale, curl the right knee into the chest. Step the right foot through. We're going to lower that back left knee down again. Now this time we're going to widen that left hand out to the left and maybe heel toe that right foot toward the right, turning the right toes open as the right hand comes up to the right thigh for a twisted low lunge. 
So a stronger opening across the left hip flexor and down through the quad. Now you can stay there, you can move the hips back a bit, maybe bend the left heel toward the buttocks. You can reach back with the right hand and come to the inner edge of the foot and then across the top and then toward the pinky toe side. You maybe take a bind. Take a breath in. Focus on the exhalation as you let the breath go. Last breath in and out here. All right, let's bring everything back to the center. Heel toe that right foot in a little bit. Lift your left knee. Step your right foot back. Now, as the weight comes into the right foot, let's take the left heel up. Now, before we move into the second side, we're actually just going to bend that left knee. Twisted three-leg dog. And you have the opportunity to stay here. Or to take this into wild thing by reaching that left foot to the right, pivoting more on the right foot so that the left foot comes down and you can take a back bend here. So ground into the right hand, left fingertips stretch up or toward the front of the room. Breath in. And you want to be really mindful as you're transitioning back. So this right shoulder in particular is using a lot of caution as you start to spin the body back, coming into downward dog. Take a breath in through your nose and exhale, let it go through your mouth. Okay, you're gonna shift into the right ball of the foot. Inhale, send your left heel up into downward dog split. We're gonna exhale, curl the left knee into the chest and step the left foot by the left wrist. Lower the right knee down. We're going to take that twisted low lunge again. So right hand moves to the right, left foot, heel toes to the left with the toes turning open as the left palm comes to the thigh. And turn the belly by pressing that left hand into the thigh and then rotating through the center. You can always stay here. This is a good strong stretch for the right hip and the right quad. You can bend your right heel as an alternative. Reach back with the left hand. So I usually like to start on the Big toe side and then come to the toes and then come to the pinky toe side and then press the foot into the hand as you take the twist. Awareness and mindfulness of the flow of the breath. One more. Inhale and exhale here. And let's bring everything back to the center. So we heel toe that left foot in, framing the left foot, curl the right toes under, lift the right knee, step back, down dog, right heel lifts up, down dog split, twisted three leg dog, bend the right knee, turn it open to the right, draw the lower belly in, stay here, or this right foot can start to reach toward the left as you start to spin on your left foot a little bit. And as that right foot comes down, the right hand will lift. Mindfulness of the left shoulder. As the right arm either reaches up or forward. Another round of breath. Okay, now let's start to slowly spin back to down dog. Awareness of this left shoulder. Start to bring your right hand back down. Push off the right foot, come through down dog. All right, one more standing sequence of pose, poses here. So we're going to ground into the left ball of the foot. Inhale, right heel's going to reach up into down dog split. And again, curl the right knee in. Step the right foot by the right wrist. Lower the back left knee down. Again, that twisted low lunge. So left hand to the left heel, toe the right foot to the right, turn the right toes open as you press the right hand into the thigh and turn through the belly. Stay here or bend the left knee and reach back. Taking the bind maybe once more. Turn the head to the right or maybe take a more relaxed position with the head by looking to the left hand. Feel the right heel and the left knee engage toward one another. Last exhale here. And we're going to slowly come back around. 
heel to the right foot. Now that can be very helpful to have those blocks to the front short side. You're gonna lift your left knee, we're gonna come into half moon balanced on the right foot. So right hand might reach for the block, and you're gonna press off the left foot, and as you do, slide the left hand up to the hip and turn the left toes to the left. You can stay right here, or we could take the sugar cane version by bending the left knee and maybe reaching the hand to the ankle, just like we did at the beginning, but now standing on the right foot versus the knee. Feel the ankle anchor into the left hand. One more cycle of breath here. All right, we're coming to Uttanasana forward fold. So as you take the left hand, let it release from the foot. The left foot's going to land, and then you're going to take your feet about as wide as your frontal hip bones or even a little wider. Bend your knees and maybe even connect opposite hand to opposite elbow. So forward fold to me is always a pose that helps bring me into a greater state of release or that feeling of letting go as the body just drapes forward toward the thighs. Okay, release the hands. Inhale, take a halfway lift with the spinal column. And then exhale as you take downward facing dog. Plant the hands and step the feet back. That last series of standing poses on the second side. So let's ground into the right ball of the foot. And inhale, send the left heel high. Exhale, curl the left knee into the chest. Step the left foot by the left wrist. Lower the back right knee down, low lunge. Walk the right hand to the right, heel toe the left foot to the left, turn the toes open to the left, left hand to the thigh. Engage the left heel toward the right knee. Stay there, bend the right knee, reach back to the inside, to the top, and then the outside of the foot. Low lunge, twisted low lunge with the bind. Okay, last breath in and out here. And we're going to bring everything back around to the center as we prepare for Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. So frame your left foot, curl your right toes under, lift your right knee. So that block might support the left hand. So it's a few inches forward and also sort of diagonal from the left toes. Now the right foot lifts as the toes turn open, right hand to hip or up to the sky. Possibly Ardha Chandra Chapasana, the sugar cane version. Bend the right knee, right hand to the right ankle. As the ankle presses toward the hand, you feel the opening across the front of the body. Okay, another breath in. Out. Uttanasana, the forward fold. Let the right foot come down. Feet as wide as the frontal hip bones or slightly wider. Soften the knees, possibly opposite hand to opposite elbow. A little sway out. And reach back, catch hold of the blanket, slide the blanket toward the heels, and fold it up one to two times, and then place the heels on the blanket. It's going to go wide with the feet, heels angled in, toes angled out. We'll take Malasana, the garland, squat. A good pose for connecting to the energy of Apana, the downward flow of energy, this sense of release. Prayer hands can come to the heart. Chin is slightly in, downward gaze. Take 
a breath in, draw the breath in through the nose and slowly breathe out through the mouth with the slowly blowing out candles. So we're going to extend the exhalation, which is symbolic for a sense. Softening, letting go, releasing the tendency to hold and grasp. Lower the hands, lift the hips, step forward a bit. Line the feet underneath of the frontal hip bones. Inhale, take a half, they lift the spine. Exhale, downward dog. Let's hold here in downward dog for just a few moments. Lower the knees down. So we're gonna take thread the needle. So you might wanna reposition your blanket so that you can take your knees, bring your knees on to the blanket support. You might even go an inch or two wider than you usually do for table. Ground down into your right hand. Let your left arm open out to the side or sweep it up to the sky. And then as you exhale, you're gonna take this left arm and thread it through the right hand and right knee. Coming down to the left arm, left ear. If the head is hovering, you want to catch hold of an extra blanket. And let's take a few moments here. You can always walk your right hand toward the front short side of the mat. Last exhalation here. You're gonna slide that right hand back in toward the left arm. So just ground really strong through the right hand and then unthread that left arm. Come back to table. Left hand grounds down, right arm sweeps open to the side or up toward the ceiling and then exhale. Right arm is going to thread through the left hand, left knee. You're going to come down to the right arm, right side of the face. Remember, you can always support the right side of the face with the blanket support. Left hand can stay as it is. You can take your arm forward. In and out. Left hand can come back close to the right arm and thread the right arm. Come back up, tabletop, arm and asana. Take your knees right underneath of your hips, a cat cow flow. Inhale, release the belly, lift the heart. Exhale as you round your spine. Inhale, release the belly, lift the heart, curl the toes. Let's go back into down dog for a moment. Reach the sitting bones nice and high. The heart reaches toward the thighs and the low belly draws in. Let the weight come into the left ball of the foot. We're gonna sweep that right heel up into down dog flip. We're gonna come into Pigeons. So you're going to curl the right knee into the chest. You're going to start to slide the right knee toward the right wrist. My right heel usually ends up lined up with my left frontal hip bone. And inch the left toes toward the back short side of the mat a little bit. And even swaying and rocking with the hips is great. Now, if the hips you need a little extra elevation, you can always slide a bolster support right underneath of the pelvis. 
thread the needle, or I'm sorry, figure four on your spine is a great alternative for this pose. So feel free to take figure four as well. You can stay more upright or in the spirit of release and letting go. You might walk the hands forward and come into the forward folding version of the pose, sometimes referred to as sleeping swan. Might notice there's places in the body where you feel like you're gripping or holding tension. You can actually utilize the breath or invite the breath into those spaces to help you release muscular tension and holding. And that may be the result of stress or uh, coming from maybe certain postural positions. These slower, longer held poses invite us into feeling a sense of release within the pose. That sense of release allows us to settle into the moment with a little more presence, peace, and calmness. Take your last cycle of breath here. As you feel ready, you can begin to lift the chest away from the floor and you can take your hands so that they're as wide or maybe even a little wider than the shoulders preparing to return to down dog by curling the left toes lifting the left knee, and then sliding that right leg back. Ground into the right ball of the foot. Take a big breath in. Lift the left heel up into downward dog slip. I'm going to curl that left knee in, coming into pigeon on the second side. Left knee moves toward the left wrist. Left heel might be lining up a little more with the right front hip bone. You can Inch the right toes back a bit. So remember, an alternative is figure four from the spine, or take your bolster and prop up the pelvis for a little more height to reduce the stretch across the left hip. You can stay upright, or as you feel ready, you can start to bring the body into the forward folding version of the pose. And always support the forehead with the extra blanket, the block, your hands, the floor. I notice the difference between the sides. Some postural imbalances might create a lot more restriction or tightness on one side versus the other. As you find stillness and hold in the pose, you're finding that sense of release within the posture. You feel connected to the moment. Nervous system settling.
your last cycle of breath. Start to slowly transition from this shape by bringing the body up. And take the hands as wide or a little wider than the shoulders, spread the fingers. Curl the right toes, lift the right knee, and then begin to slide that left foot back, coming into the very last downward dog of today's practice. Inhale, bend the knees nice and deep. You bring your shin bones about parallel to the floor. Take a breath in. As you exhale, lift the sitting bones back high. Send the heels toward the earth. Breathe in. And exhale, knees coming down, knees a little wide. Pelvis toward the heels, wide knee balasana. Stack your palms or your fists or rest your forehead on the mat. Breathe in through the nose and Maybe exhale slow through the mouth with the image of blowing out the candles. Last few cycles of breath here. All right, last, last cycle of breath here. And the transition up through table. I'm gonna slide the knees off the blanket, hold up the blanket, slide it out to the right or to the left. Bring your pelvis back to the center of the mat, and then you're gonna come down onto this side. Right, so as you come down onto your spine, hug the knees and the thighs into the belly chest once more. We're going to take a happy baby by sliding the knees wide. So declined wide knee child's pose. Feel free to stay there. Stack your ankles over your knees. Reach up for that chins, the outer ankles, the outer feet. Reach your tailbone toward the front short side of the mat and feel your shoulders relax into the mat. Let the soles of the feet have the sensation of reaching upward toward the sky. Good. And then let's hug the knees back into the chest. Plant the feet down onto the mat a little wide. Sway the knees a time or two. Clearing the low back. Final clearing of the screen of the mind. And we're going to extend the legs out. Coming back to where we began at the beginning of the practice. Shavasana. Heels drop down, toes fall open, palms face up toward the sky. 
Let the weight of the body sink and settle. Let go of any lengthening of the breath. Allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm. Rest here in Shavasana for another minute or two. Continual process of release and letting go with each out breath, each exhalation. your home please feel free stay in shavasana for as long as you like if you're ready to transition you can allow your knees one at a time to bend so that the feet come flat to the floor and then roll your body over to the right or left press your hands down and rise to your seat Join your prayer hands at your heart as you sit tall. Thank you for joining me in today's practice. The light within me sees and bows to that same light that exists within you. Thank you.